Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to dreaming bigger and explore places and people that are larger than life. Head out to Royberg and see the views from the country's biggest chair. Visit the farming town of Bathurst, home to the world's biggest pineapple. Step inside the tallest building in Africa, the Leonardo in Santon. Meet designers and larger-than-life personalities Abir Mashlase and Brad Muttet. See how the residents of Calfinia in the Karoo are making use of the biggest postbox in South Africa. Sink your teeth into the man vs burger challenge in an African bushveld setting. And explore the Eastern Cape with award-winning actress Zola Nombona. Oyama Bueta is a businesswoman, content creator and plus-size model who is making it her mission to encourage women to be confident in their bodies. Spending a day with her, we find out just some of the ways her influence is uplifting others. Hi, my name is Oyama, formerly known as Oyama Bota. I'm a businesswoman, a master's candidate, and a content creator based on body positivity. I believe that body positivity is something that I've always been about, but I just never knew about the term until social media happened, and that's when I knew that there's a whole movement around body positivity. That just confirmed what I've been about, which has been to embrace myself, to embrace confidence and embrace other people's bodies in a positive way. And then from then, modeling came about. Being in front of the camera has really boosted my confidence and tying in with the body positive work that I've been doing, my modeling has really also added an element in that because body positivity and my modeling together make the perfect combo. This confident queen's impressive modeling career has seen her work with some of the most exclusive names in beauty and fashion around the world. This face makes me feel absolutely beautiful. And when I'm shooting, it's very important that I look good because after that, I feel good. And the shots come absolutely amazing. So I love that. My modeling career has been absolutely fantastic, I would say. It's been a really roller coaster of a ride because you would need to attend castings and castings is where you can either be accepted by the client or get rejected. And I've I had to learn that. I had to learn that even if you get rejected that it doesn't affect your worth as a model. And I've featured on many different campaigns in the fashion industry in South Africa and it's been absolutely amazing. Beauty and fashion have been the two most important pillars that I've used to really express myself, not only online, but in person, because I've been able to be self-aware enough to know and be able to redefine what beauty means to me beyond the normative yardsticks of what beauty is. The Mother City, with its countless trendy hotspots, is the perfect place for this fashionista. A boutique hotel is today's venue for her spending time with like-minded individuals. Cloud9 is a boutique hotel located at the foot of Table Mountain. It's where heritage meets luxury with a touch of modern influence. We reopened our doors after extensive renovation that took us six months. Etienne Hanukum from Etienne Hanukum Design was the leading designer. He was influenced by Cape Town and the surrounding nature. For the reception area, we wanted to go with a more local feel and look, and we used the vibrant colors of the Boerkarp. We also used illustrations from the Atlantic seaboard, which you will find on the wallpaper as you come into the hotel. So the rooftop restaurant has a 360 degree of the mother city, ideal place to just come and relax after a long day with a sundowner. Oyama believes in the power of surrounding herself with positive people and she's championed an initiative to encourage women to take ownership of how they feel about themselves. Welcome to the All Bodies Are Beautiful meetup. It's yet another beautiful installment. I'm here with my girls and we're going to talk serious issues and the not so serious issues where we just empower each other and have lots of fun. 
<laughs> we basically all dressed in the same color because when I started the All Bodies Are Beautiful meetup, it was very important for me that everyone feels like they're in a space where they feel included, you know? And one way to do that is to have a theme and a theme based on outfits, you know? It was really about the unity. A desire to promote self-love and to enhance holistic self-esteem led Oyama on her journey into the fashion industry. Starting my own fashion label for Yummy Hearts and Curves, it was very important for me to design swimwear as my first starting point. This is because I truly believe everybody has a beach body. My flagship line is an inclusive swimwear line that has very quirky slogans on them. This was important for me because for the longest time, plus size girls have had to go the extra mile to find swimwear, for example. So for me, it was taking the reverse, I call it reverse psychology in that, let's make it easy for the plus size girls to find swimwear. So I in intentionally made sure that the line specifically caters to plus size girls first. I remember how difficult it was for me to find my very first swimwear. And when I finally got it, the feeling that I got, it was absolutely amazing. So with that, I really wanted that feeling to be felt by someone else. So through this line, I was able to do that. The response in how um, the line has made the woman feel has been exactly that. And I've been so happy to have been able to give them exactly that. So Yummy Hearts and Curves comes from the fact that Yummy is my AKA. A lot of people know me by the name of Yummy. And then Hearts, I knew that the things I'll be doing within the brand and the words I'll be speaking would be coming from my heart. And then Curves, simply because I'm a curvy girl and I do curvy things. So that's how Yummy Hearts and Curves came about. Within my swimwear line, I have these amazing cozies that you see on me and on the ladies behind me. There's very quirky slogans on them and they speak to just how we feel when we wear the swimwear. Speaking to her peers added to her insight of how important the philosophy behind fashion is. Wearing swimsuits that are so empowering and so positive, it makes me feel so sexy and confident. I absolutely love this. Feeling sexy and beautiful will really boost my confidence. Now, being in a swim costume that's going to make a statement without me uttering a word is really the one for me. So I feel really sexy showing my thighs out and really making statement, darling. Oyama believes in the idea that empowered people in turn empower others. The more people she influences, the more impactful she can be. What I hope people take from the work that I do is all around positivity, which speaks to you being positive as a person towards another person's body, seeing them in a positive light, but also being a positive person for yourself in that you being confident and seeing yourself in a positive light, because in that way, it translates to the other things that you do as a person, and it makes you be able to tap into your greatness. Social expectations can be tough and create pressure to conform. Oyama Bueta is paving the way for more women to feel empowered and proud of the way they look. Coming up, visit South Africa's biggest chair in the Royberg Winery and travel to pineapple country Bathurst to see the world's largest pineapple. Berg Winery, surrounded by the renowned Robertson's Wine Valley, is home to world-class wines, striking natural beauty, and the biggest chair in Africa. Hi, I'm Marianne Lochner. Welcome to Roeberg Winery and the biggest red chair in Africa. The big chair came about when I watched a movie and I saw this big white chair in Canada and people were standing in front of the chair and took their pictures and I decided Roeberg needs a big red chair. So if you Google biggest chairs in the world, you'll see that we're part of a whole family of big chairs all over the world. There's one in Italy, one in Spain, one in Austria and a few in America. They all look different, but 
all the chairs are at restaurants or at uh, tourist attractions. And it makes sense because a chair is a symbol of hospitality and it basically says, come and have a seat and relax. And that's what we want. The chair is nine meters tall and the platform where you can stand is 4.5 meters from the ground. The chair was made from steel and has been on the property since 2013. We have our own love lock wall and couples can bring their own locks or they can buy a red one from the shop. They can put the lock on the wall and then the special part is they can throw the key in a wine barrel so that their love can age like good red wine. There is also a recently renovated bistro and deli on site that prides itself on great ambience and amazing food. Hi, I'm Rian and I'm the owner of the Red Chair Bistro at Ruebeg Winery. So when I designed the restaurant, it was important for me to have a nice, trendy place, but I wanted a South African feel so lockdown had a big impact on our industry, but we have decided to stay positive. And on weekends, people come with their friends and family and they enjoy the food while someone is playing the piano. Many are attracted for an outdoor picnic experience on top of the red chair. We are joined by our friends Bram Poulain from Roderwig the Nursery and Dani Niau, singer-songwriter and now staying in Robertson to enjoy our famous meat platter and the spectacular views of the mountains. I just love sitting on this big red chair looking at the spectacular mountains. It's so beautiful. From the winelands of the Cape to a small farming town in the Eastern Cape, we travel to Bathurst, just 15 kilometers inland from Port Alfred, to explore the town's big pineapple. Hi, welcome to the biggest pineapple in the world. I'm Lee Boisa, and I work from the Pineapple Growers Association here in Bathurst. 1865, the first pineapple was grown in the region. And ever since then, this has been pineapple country. But how did the big pineapple come about? Our farmers went over to Australia to visit the Australian pineapple growers. There, they saw their big pineapple and decided this was a fabulous idea. Came back with a mold and did want to do a replica of the Australian big pineapple. Owls landed up by error 16.7 meters high, which is bigger than the Australian pineapple. This is why it's known as the biggest pineapple in the world. It represents the area as pineapple growing country. We have a many, many tourists visiting us to come and view the biggest pineapple in the world. At the bottom, we have a wonderful little gift shop and then our museum at the top with lots of info to read and a little DVD to watch on how pineapples grow. Right, welcome to part of our museum in the Big Pineapple. You'll come up the stairs. You can read about all the history of pineapple. From there, you can go to the main pineapple planting areas in the world. Bathurst is truly a hidden gem of South Africa, with plenty to spark the interest of tourists. The impressive pineapple fields are certainly among those attractions. Right, we are now in one of our pineapple fields. This area produces approximately 100,000 tons of pineapples per year. We can harvest all year round, which is very, very fortunate for us as pineapple growers. On large scale production, the farmers actually have harvesters and the harvesting is done by hand but everybody wears gloves and all safety precautions are adhered to because it is a spiny fruit and it can be very rough on the hands. Today, we're just going to give you an example, no glove, and to pick the pineapple. The Bathurst area is known for its pineapple growing. Even though we are further south of any pineapple growing area in the world, we have a special belt that runs through this area 
so pineapples thrive and they enjoy growing here. With a climate situated between the winter and summer rainfall seasons, Bathurst is well suited for pineapple farming, with some rainfall throughout most of the year. Right, we've just picked some awesome fresh pineapples and I'm going to show you how to peel and slice your pineapple. Screw it off. Now many people have different ways of doing this. I'm just going to do it the simple way. Okay, right now I'm just taking the peels off and a little bit of the eyelets. With the sweet flavor profile of a pineapple, it truly is a diverse fruit, rich with possibility. There are many, many things that a person can do with pineapple. In the big pineapple, we have a variety of jams, pineapple relish, curried pineapple. And today I'm just going to show you two very, very simple things. If you have a savory tooth, then you will take equal quantities of cayenne pepper, paprika and cinnamon and then sprinkle over your fruit. It's wonderful with a braai and you can actually use it as an awesome salad. For the people with a sweet tooth, a lovely, very, very easy recipe, equal quantities of sugar and dried mint. Toss it all together and it is way to go for an awesome, awesome dessert. Wow, that really brings out the freshness in the pineapple and the mint just adds that extra little bit of flavor. Never take simplicity for granted because these simple recipes are larger than life, just like our big pineapple, the biggest pineapple in the world. It's wonderful to see yet another reminder of the many interesting landmarks worth exploring we have in our country. Next on the Insider Essay, explore Africa's tallest building in the heart of Santon and meet larger-than-life designers Abia Mahlase and Brad Muttet. Situated in the heart of Santon in Gauteng stands Africa's tallest skyscraper, proudly towering over the city of gold below. Hi, Insider SA. My name is Sinead Seabreth and I'm the Guest Relations Officer at the tallest building in South Africa. Leonardo is a fully-fledged lifestyle hub in the middle of Santon that has an offering of retail space, offices, conferencing, as well as apartments. The only way to accommodate all of the facilities in the building was to consistently build up and that's how we ended up with the tallest building in South Africa. The building was created by CoArc Architects and it was designed to be sustainable and green. It is 55 storeys, 234 metres high and 6,050 steps. The hotel is named after artist Leonardo da Vinci, whose art was inspired by his fascination with the four elements, earth, water, wind and fire. We had an incredible opportunity in the space to really work with design integrated thinking and creating opportunities for local artists. Our intention in the space was to take you on a journey and a journey that was based on the innate curiosity of Leonardo da Vinci. And because this is the largest building in South Africa, we wanted artworks that spoke to that scale. As you arrive, the first artwork you'll experience is the Ancestor. We wanted something that was on a scale that matched the building. And what we have is a half a ton chandelier hand joined out of 80,000 pieces of brass, copper and stainless steel. And it speaks to the idea of the Big Bang, the initiation of Earth, and of course our connection with our ancestors and spirituality. The first piece on your left is an artwork by Mpongeni Botsalezi that tells the story of the origins of man in Africa and transitions through the entire history of our country and our continent to where we are in the present day. As you come through the lobby of the building, you're going to encounter this work by Bronwyn Lace called Forged Leviathan. The bones used in this artwork took about 10 years to collect from all around South Africa. Each bone has been lovingly treated with gold leaf as a way to respect its original sculptural form. This piece speaks about origins and fossils, the evolution of life, and the durability of life. 
With water and life comes growth, which brings us to Winston Natuli's massive wall of salvaged tree roots. These jacaranda roots, combined with pieces of salvaged furniture, have been carved and embedded with images of wildlife and creatures, creating an incredibly tactile, mythical forest. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic that we've been experiencing, we wanted to market the building in a completely different light. So we decided, because the art is so exquisite, it tells its own story. Ballet on its own is a story as well, so we wanted to combine the two of them. We collaborated with Joburg Ballet because we also wanted to showcase homegrown talent, and the dancers were dressed by House of Nala. Luxurious living spaces were created with the assistance of top designers for those who want to stay inside the tallest building in town. Our apartment owners had a choice between two well-known interior designers. One was Stephen Falk and the other was Varum. Stephen Falk's color schemes are very neutral and each scheme has different undertones such as gold, purple and green, whereas Varum's colors are very bold. Included in its offering is a space for people to meet, dine and relax. Orem is the heart of the lifestyle hub. It is designed by Varum Interior Decorators and it is inspired by the fact that we are in Johannesburg and it is the city of gold. The suspended artwork behind me is called Murmuration and it is actually wind that is being depicted going through a tunnel. It does have the gold undertones, which also flows through to the rest of the restaurant. Head chef Yandri Nimant explains the philosophy behind their offering. Our main vision and goal is to cater for everyone's palate. South Africa is very diverse and we use premium ingredients that can blow people's minds. With it being South Africa's tallest building, it offers guests an incredible experience with views to die for. The sky is no longer the limit. Thank you for joining me on this incredible location and we hope to see you soon. This impressive building is a symbol of prosperity and a champion of hope on the African continent. Larger than life personalities Abir Matlase and Brad Muttert are life partners and gurus of the fashion world who have created their own fashion company specializing in colorful clothing and home decor. Abir and I met while studying fashion. There was an immediate creative connection and we just grew this relationship together. Okay, so Bradley and I two years back entered Winner Home on SBC3 and we ended up winning that competition and somehow that really catapulted us into the interior space. Uh, so it mixed the fashion side with the interior side and we got some clients from both sides. And so as we found a way to just balance the two together to create fashionable interiors. We always like to venture into new things. So fashion, interior, and we've just launched a kids range. Amen is about Yes, I love it. Yes, it's great. It's got that wow factor. If you see something and you say, Amen. So we focus on creating statement pieces, statement pieces that can last a lifetime and will always make a statement wherever you go. And aside from the fact that the industry is very competitive, it's also as a designer, you've got to harness your own creativity and find the voice or that aesthetic that makes you distinct from the next person. Focus on your vision, your aesthetic, and where you want to take your brand, because we're all unique. Amen. House of Nala is an initiative by AFI, which brings African designers together under one roof at the Leonardo Hotel in Sanjay. We thrive on African optimism, African culture, African prints, and we love them. And this season, we try to mish match mm. prints together like crazy um, to create these amazing puffer penduka jackets. Okay, well, I'm not wearing, I'm wearing one of the late, the last season. <laughs> You're wearing one of the new ones. New season? Yeah, where it's basically almost reversible. So you've got a pop of color on the inside, 
and on the outside is also just kapow. Yeah, clash of colors, it's warm, it's comfortable, and I'm telling you, this will make a statement wherever you go. Absolutely, even in the dark. Okay, so now what Brady's gonna pull out is two little examples of the Amen Kids range that we created with Penny Stain, and it just gives you an, a little taste of that adorableness that comes from the Amen aesthetic, but now it's for Amen Kids. Among their models today are bodybuilder and Mr. World SA runner-up, Anthony Siganazzi, and second runner-up for Mr. Gay World SA, Shannon Canigan. Well, this uh, collection was done in collaboration with an artist based on South African hairstyles. And you can see we've done authentically African different types of hairstyles, incorporating the zebra print, the leopard print, which we love always. So I think it's a great unisex shirt that can be worn summer, winter, and it comes with matching shorts. Absolutely. We're taking you to the hair salon and we're giving you some inspiration of hot haircuts to incorporate. And in true Amen style, we don't stick to just one season. You gotta give a girl options. So whether you are layering from spring, summer, winter, you are ready for any storm or sunshine. The digital prints that we created ourselves based on Gender Must Fall. Absolutely, in collaboration with the photographer, Leroy Jason. And then this is from the Hungry Boy Amen collection. It's a shirt dress that you can wear tucked in or tucked out, depending on your mood or your function. And she's looking fab. The brand and the clothes, it's fearless, it's bold, it's colorful. It's everything that our people represent. And it's the, I feel it represents the inside of every gay person. And even if you look at the clothes, it is, a representation of pride itself, and we are proud of the brand. Anthony is wearing one of our black quilted uh, winter jackets. He's wearing a pair of shorts, also from our Gender Must Fall collection, uh, which was with a collaboration, Leroy Jason. These clothes are very unique. I love the design, the finishing is great, and another thing is it's comfortable. I would definitely wear something like this when I go out and definitely turn some heads. Honestly speaking, I mean, just by looking at this group of sexy gentlemen, we honestly design for every type of guy, every type of girl, and it's you finding your own personality and bringing that out in the pieces that speak to you. People that want to stand out, make a statement, and just be the amen of any party. They are also passionate about upcycling pieces in their own home, hunting for old treasures they reinvent with their vibrant and imaginative style. Ta-da! <laughs> they are here, they are here. They sure. are here. So this is what we do. Absolutely, when the cash is dry, it's time to DIY. And that's what we are known for and amen. We love to upcycle, take old things and give them a new life. Absolutely. So with these chairs in particular, we went to our church at Forest Town Methodist Church and we went to their yard sale and found these fabulous chairs and we just knew that something could be done with them to just bring them to a contemporary state of mind, time, aesthetic. Yeah. yeah so we had them reupholstered by a guy that we know that did this amazing reupholstery yeah. with a fabric that we had designed in collaboration with Fabric Bank. Yeah. Um, and I think he did a great job and they look... I mean, it looks amazing and it's like it fits in with the whole aesthetic that we're trying to create and reinvent. <laughs> and so we really like to play and take something old, bring in something new and then turn it into something contemporary, something fun, something that's expressive, yet looks beautiful and is comfortable. Brad and Abir's fearless approach to their work has allowed them to forge their careers by being true to themselves. Achieving success by expressing your individuality deserves an amen. Coming up, see South Africa's biggest post box in the Karoo town of Calfinia and taste the delicious burgers of Capitec client Kaya Kwa restaurant.
The town of Calfinia in the Great Karoo is certainly known for its surrounding vast beauty and distinct charm. What one may find interesting to discover, however, is that the town is also home to the world's largest post box. Good day, my name is Daniel Pretorius. I'm a tour guide in Calfinia and also the manager of Calfinia Hotel. We are especially famous for the red post box. It is the biggest in the world and we encourage our customers and in town to still write letters, which we can post at our big uh, red post box. It's also called the flower post box, which is very fitting because it's very famous in the flower season, which is now August and September, that uh, people come from all over South Africa and the world to come and post their letters in this big post box, which is so unique because uh, they put a nice hand-stamped flower on the envelope. The history around the post box is that in 1995, uh, the post box was a water, water tank that stood on the grounds of the Dutch Reformed Church, became in disrepair because uh, they weren't using it anymore. So at that time, the local uh, doctor's wife, Dr. Kutsia's wife, she saw the tank. And, uh, it looks like a, a post box. And together with her husband, they approached the post office and they made the big red post box that you see here today. Originally built as a water tower, the post box stands taller than the average double-story house. Despite its larger-than-life appearance, it still functions just the same as its far smaller counterparts. Here we are in front of the big flower post box, and its measurements is 6.17 meters tall. Its circumference is 9.43 meters, and it held a volume of 43,600 uh, liters and you can imagine how many letters it's holding today. The flower on the post box is also the flower that they will hand stamp on your envelope before they send it out. Town locals like Aleta Kutsia are proud of their tourist attraction. Here is the biggest post box in the whole world. And um, I have a kranige briewe skrywer en ek is baie lief vir die groot postbus oor het so mooi postbus is en as jy jou brief post daar dan kry jy die blomstempelkie op by die postkantoor. Ons het al mense gehad van oorsee wat by die postbus sien dan koop hulle spesiale postkar en post hulle het oorsee net vir die stempelkie. Sometimes the most interesting things are where you'd least expect them. Thank you, the Insider SA, for coming to Calvinia and allowing me to show you our big red post box. And don't forget to drop us a letter. It's clear the town of Calvinia has a wonderful sense of imagination. Just three hours from Johannesburg, you'll find Capitec merchant Kaya Kwa Restaurant. Besides offering you a chance to enjoy a bite to eat in a stunning African bushveld setting, you can bravely attempt the Man vs. Burger Challenge if you dare. Kayako was established in 1995. It first started off as a small pub just for the people inside of the estate. And then it escalated into a restaurant, so we bought Kayako and I'm here still today. We are situated in the beautiful city of Tabazimbi in the Waterberg and um, we are opposite the Marakele National Park. We are so blessed to be in the bushveld because we have all the animals and all the special things that you don't get in the city, so this is where we find our peace. COVID was very hard. We have loyal customers that know what we went through. Those people came here the end of the month, there's no money. They'll come even if it's for a drink, but they supported us. So my community and my staff is the reason that we are still open. At Kayakwa, our food portions is bigger than other restaurants. We like to keep our plates full. And I was wondering about a competition, especially after lockdown. 
I needed to promote Kaya Kwa in a certain way. And we decided to make this humongous burger, give a person 40 minutes to eat it. If he eats it, he doesn't pay for it. But I challenge it. It is humongous and it is very delicious because Aaron is preparing it. This is our Strupa's burger. Firstly, we take a freshly baked jumbo bun, we butter it up, and we're going to put lettuce on, slice tomatoes, slice the raw onion. After we put our sauce, then we put our patty. The patty is 800 gram patty. Prepare to your customer satisfaction, medium rare, well done, or medium to well. And after this, I put a little bit of secret sauce in it, then I put a bun on it. Then I'll put 500 gram chips on it, pepper sauce on the chips. After the pepper sauce, crunchy, crispy, big onion rings. Together, the whole thing will give you 1.5 kg. This is by no means a simple feat. What has been simple, making a huge difference to the smooth running of daily operations at Kaya Kwa, has been banking with Capitec. So Capitec appealed to me because of their simplicity. They are transparent, they have no hidden fees. It's 24-hour um, assistance, 24-7 assistance. It's affordable, the fees are low, just the best option to choose for your business. Capitec assists businesses like Kaya giving clients different options to pay, like we have tap to pay, scan to pay, and that is ultimately what Capitec is all about, simplicity and putting all our clients and the merchants in control. Capitec has affordable and tech-savvy devices to offer, and we've got affordable and competitive fees, and ultimately, if there's any inquiries, we offer the best and fastest service that there is. It's very nice. So that is too big, but hopefully I'm, I'm going to finish it. I think on the menu they spelled burger wrong. It must be family meal. This time I'm going to finish this for me. <laughs> this is not a burger. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit tough, man. Yo, this thing is too big. When they say that it's a big bag, I wasn't thinking this big. We have all the things that in a city you don't get. People get to come for a weekend to the National Park. We have it on our doorstep. And we are so fortunate to have all that. So yeah, Kaya Kwa is larger than life because we make our clients happy and we love what we do. If you have a larger-than-life challenge and need a boost in the right direction, you stand a chance of winning a 1,000 Rand cash prize. Simply reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms using hashtag livebetter. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Coming up on the Insider SA, we travel to the Eastern Cape with actress and Generations The Legacy star Zola Nombona to see how its unique beauty is yours to explore. Sponsored by Capitec. Simplify banking. Live better. Joined by award-winning actress Zola Nombona and her friend Ati Pitella, we head out on an adventure to explore the beauty of the Eastern Cape. With such rich culture and diversity, the itinerary is jam-packed with adventure and excitement. So today we're in the beautiful quaint village of Storms River, situated in the heart of Titikama and Garden of the Garden Road. And it's a beautiful place to just come and enjoy the luxurious offerings, forest to mountain activities that we have to offer. Tetsukama is the adventure hub of activities to do and has something to offer for, for everyone. We have the beautiful Segway activity, which is an amazing thing to do for the entire family. Sitting down for milkshakes outside a 60s-style diner inspired by Hollywood icon Marilyn Monroe, we learn more about the larger-than-life star's impressive career. Hi, Ikamala Mugusola Nombona, and I am a performing artist slash actress slash everything that I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I've always wanted to be an actor. I'm an actor. I'm a performer. Love attention, <laughs> love the stage. The cooler 
the 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 in my own country has given me a pat on the back to say you're in a good place and you're doing good. So for me winning that award, um, it made me realize that I'm living my purpose and send out when you're right. Sure, so being on this trip is teaching me and I'm hoping that it doesn't just end on this trip itself. I must never allow fear to cripple me. No matter so you can now when I'm starting either something new or no matter so you can now. I'll always jump for it. I'll do it because most times than not, there is a pot of gold at the end of it. Segway Adventure Tours are the perfect way to take in the beauty of the indigenous forest and the surrounding Tsitsikama Mountains. With her family roots in the Eastern Cape, Zola feels strongly about protecting the environment. It's very important for us to try to preserve as much as we can of our nature due to global warming and everything um, that is going against it at the moment. I'm a mother now, so I think it would be wonderful for my son to also grow up and be able to come and experience all these things. So I think it's really, really important for us to take care of our environment so they can take care of us. Welcome to the Titsikama Big Three. It is over a thousand years old, um, nine meters in diameter and 36 meters above the canopy of the trees. That is why people come from around the world to come and explore the Eastern Cape and rediscover Tsitsikama. Seeing the tree itself is actually super massive. I've never seen a tree this big. So it's also quite astonishing that it's something in the Eastern Cape that I didn't know about. So I'm really happy that people are now going to know that Tsitsikama has the big tree and it looks beautiful. Standing over 36 meters tall, this giant yellowwood has been here for over 800 years. Screenwriter and director Ati Patella has been a good friend to Zola long before they both found success. So Zola and I grew up together, so we've known each other for years, like plus minus 20 years. Then as we grew up, we end up in the same industry and then we decided to start a business together. So. She's my sister, friend, and business partner. I would definitely recommend people to come and visit the Eastern Cape. It's really beautiful. Everything in the Eastern Cape is natural. For an example, the tree. I think visiting the Eastern Cape is a good reminder to people of what nature could become if you just allow it to be and just preserve it. Leaving the forest, their next adventure takes us to Blokrans for the highest bungee from a bridge in the world at 200 meters above the river. So we are at the Blokrans Bridge, which is the world's highest bungee bridge. I'm scared, but hey, I'm here and I'm going to do it. I'm a bit excited, but for now, it's just the nerves. But let's see what happens! With nerves building, it's time to face fears and take the plunge. Right now, I'm very scared, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going first, and I don't understand. I feel like it's so unfair that I must go first. Uh, I don't think I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I don't really do this often. We go out and eat, you know, work. So today's the day. What's going to happen from here on in, I'm going to do the tie-ups to make sure that we add more safety to you ladies. As you will head forward, we'll have two people alongside you on the edge. We want you to focus on the mountain. Keep your head up, arms out to your side. We will be counting you down five, four, three, two, one. Use your legs, propel yourself forward but try and do this for the duration down. <sighs> okay, so what you're saying, we can't do this. We need to spread our arms. This would look good for form and balance, but if you want to love yourself, please do. It took a lot for me to just let go, but I did it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Good luck to everyone else going after me. <laughs> I'm very scared, but I guess we're here now, so. <laughs> Want 
<laughs> I'm not hoping you need to hug me because if you don't hug me, I say I'm gonna pass out. Having faced their fears, the next adventure planned is kayaking into Storms River Gorge. Paddling through the deep pools and caves of Titsikama National Park is one of the best ways to appreciate its magnificence. Sure, this cave is beautiful. Um, I don't think we've experienced it the way we did on this trip. The scenery is amazing. There's a lot to do in the Eastern Cape. Looking forward to experiencing so much more of it. And so what we do, we do a Kak and Lalo tour. We're gonna go up the gorge, Storms River Mouth, and explore the beauty of the Titicama and the cave. And we're gonna do some cliff jumping and Lalos, and they're gonna swim and they're gonna explore more up the gorge. With only the sounds of nature surrounding them, Zola and Ati are in touch with their environment as they escape into the majestic serenity of this natural treasure of the Eastern Cape. So I've never kayaked before. I'm not a big fan of um, collectors of water, so I was really scared to do this. But because I think this whole trip is just about being brave and doing what's out of the box, I did it. I saw amazing things, I saw different textures of the water, I saw different rocks, and I saw a fish. And I believe that she didn't see it, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, I think if you did not know, baby, Eastern Cape, yours to explore. Yes! Oh, today, I killed it. This experience was absolutely amazing, and I was so proud of myself. I jumped and I kayaked. Let's see what else the Eastern Cape has for us. From the river to the skies, we meet up with Gerrit van Sail, owner of Skydive Jeffreys Bay. With more than 2,000 jumps to his name, the ladies are in great hands. So today we're hosting Zolo and Ati. Uh, we're taking them up to uh, 10,000 feet to skydive with us. The activity of skydiving is very safe. It's heavily regulated and with years of development of equipment. There's two tandem instructors that's highly qualified um, that will be jumping with them. We form as a drop zone, part of the Parachute Association of South Africa, and we are regulated by PASA, which is the Parachute Association of South Africa, and the CAA. Getting strapped up and ready for their tandem dives, Zola and Ati are proving their thrill-seeking adventurers, ready to take on any challenge. It's amazing, it's gonna be great. We're doing, we'll see. Excited, scared, let's see what's gonna happen. I am feeling super excited. I think only because I'll be jumping with someone, so I think that's why right now it feels a bit better. I'm nervous, but I'm so glad that I'm doing this. And I feel like I'm in, the, I'm in good hands. So hey, here we go. I'm about to fly! Breathtaking views of the Jeffreys Bay coastline await all those brave enough to take to the skies to make the jump. The activity of skydiving is an amazing experience for, for anybody that's keen to jump. Um, we take you guys up to 10,000 feet. They jump out of the plane, free fall is uh, 200 kilometers an hour. So you free fall for approximately 30 seconds. The parachute opens, your tandem instructor looks after you with this experience. Landing on, the, on our landing area here, beautiful views, lots of things to see, awesome experience to, to come and do here in the Eastern Cape with us. Let's go after Free Bay. Over and over and over, it was brilliant. The guys are so gentle, like they're really cool, they they're take you through everything. The stuff is insane. Um, it's scary, but they're always like, calm down, you're here to have fun. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of my diving, going, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I was like, but you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna die having fun. <laughs> thank you so much to the Insider SA. And a big, big, big thank you to the Eastern Cape Parks and Tourism Agency. Thank you! Lovely experience, thank you. <laughs> the Eastern Cape is a province filled with world-class experiences and unrivaled beauty. Make sure to plan your next adventure to this incredible part of our country. 
For more information on the guests featured in today's show, head over to the insidersa.co.za. Join us again next week as we celebrate women. Get more of the Insider SA online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider SA. Watch the show Monday evenings at 5.30. Repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.